this is Frank, and today I'll continue this this um, animation of this rabbit, and it's a lop-eared rabbit, and the rabbit um, has eyes that blink, and then a little um, nose, let's see, um, oh here it is, the nose that, like, um, can move a little bit. And then I have the tail that will um, that will go back and forth like that, and then the ears can go like this, and she could have them forward. The other ear ear I have in the back, like when she does this, I'll make the ear visible, so it's like right about here. But for now, when she's just like in this position with her ears. I'll just have that back ear invisible. It's not needed for this. And then this little tuft of fur can go like that. And then her head can look up and down a little bit. And her paws can move. And her back paws. I uh, really had to work on this. It's such a simple design. You just make this a big circle and extend the leg it was like this that I had to to do it and that improved it a lot compared to what I had at first um, and then I could always push this back if I need to like, like when um, in the middle of a really um, particular run animation one thing I think would be a good idea is if I could scale down the the width of the torso but I don't want to um, do too much with that so I'll just leave it at default but yeah normally her torso would thin out right about here when she's like reaching out like that so she looks a little um, pudgy for a rabbit but that's okay all right, so, so here we go. I have to um, start the uh, animation. So I'm already in the stand animation. So I kind of messed up there. I'll just um, open uh, this um, rabbit again, the file. That'll just bring me right back to where I want to be with the um, stand. Because before I altered it and it messed it up. Because I messed with frame one. So here it is um, with this particular uh, stand. I'll find the pivot item right there. And I'll keyframe that under translate bone. And the reason to do that is so this height position is, is marked. Just in case... Um, she translates out of another animation um, that'll reset back to that height. Alright, so for the stand animation, I'll just copy these keyframes that I said earlier. And then for the center one, I'll just have her head rotate a little bit. And nothing uh, too fancy. Maybe her ear will move a little, her paws, and then uh, just a little bit of her torso, and then maybe have her tail go up a little bit. Alright, so that, maybe the ear could flop forward a little bit. Here, maybe you could come back and then um, with this piece here underneath, right here, I have to um, consider
consider the uh, physics of it. So right here it might go down further. And now that she's lifting her head it'd still be down here. And once she lifts it and stops her head then at this point it would go back up like that. So I could just keyframe all these over here. And then I'll skip. Well, actually, frame 48 with this type of standing animation is not too critical. I could just loop back to frame 1, but you can see it's exactly the same as frame 48. So I'll just keyframe in between. 42 and 48 and then I'll delete 48 and bring that over to 48 from uh, 45 so now you have two different animations from 1 to 48 so when you loop back to 1 you get that um, smoother animation that doesn't have any still frames that mess up but the ear is messed up now so I have to fix that there's no way that ear is going to be balancing around like that so I'll just set it right there I'll bring it back here as best as I can over there bring it back here That one is about where it is there. That's a little better, but now I have to figure out what's happening here. I shouldn't ever uh, move the ear quite as much. So there was fine, but here's where I think it messed up a little. I think it should go more back to where it was here. So stay there and then come back here. But here it kicks back too fast. I think I'll delete this one. And let's take a look. Yeah, I guess that's okay. Just to keep it a little more interesting. Rather than just have a stagnant character, I'll have the ear show some uh, personality there. Alright, so now the, the walk is the trickiest um, part since I've never really did a walk for uh, a rabbit using this type of setup. I have animated a, a rabbit when I was a kid, but it's been so long. Alright, looks like that ear is visible back there. There. And so with the walk, the first thing I have to do is the, the center pose and I have to consider her ears are already in motion her uh, paws will be already in their motion and these paws will be at their point as well I think that's okay right there all account for the ears as well. And then the torso, I have to um, keyframe the position for the height. This way if she jumps up, I can vary that up. Alright, so this will take place over one second. So I'll go to frame 12 and 24 just to um, create the, 
the keyframes. And the keyframe is just the uh, the major frame of animation. All right, so now I have to have her. Let's see, moving forward or moving in to coil up for the advance. So let's say I have this happening here. Let's see, maybe something like that. So this, so there she is there, and that that tuft will be um, under the force of gravity and momentum, so it's still up there. However, once it hits here, the tuft finally catches up and it drops. Like that. And then I have to consider the ears. Let's say the ears are over here. See, these are secondary pieces, but I want to um, consider them now since there are such major elements of the rabbit. Alright, so that other ear is over there. So this piece would go like that. And now it's going to go there. And here is where she'll hop forward. And with this um, character, uh, this is actually um, going to be in one of my um, animated films, um, the project I'm working on. Alright, so that leg is going to um, push out. I could go like that, but it looks a little weird. So I'll just kick out that leg like that. This is where the height becomes a, a factor. And the, the rabbit's ears are going to really push back because she's you know, really forcing herself forward suddenly. And this tuft will really kick back as well under pressure. So there it is there. And Here's the leap right there. I have to have her off the ground. So by this point, she has to be in the air. I have to lift her torso up. But before I do that, let me just start here where, where I'm going to have her lifted up probably about that high. It's supposed to be a walk, but I could easily turn this into a run. So right here, these legs are kicking off against the ground. And then here, they release off the ground into the air. This ear should be going back a little bit further. So what I'll do here, let's see, maybe I could use this one. Because she's landing. And then just delete that last one and then add keyframe here delete this and it'll loop back to this here only problem here is I have to account for the ears so are, are the ears still going to be in the air I would say yeah I'd say they'd be like that because they're still still 
like the ears are still up here. So that means by this frame, for the ears to be down that far, she would have already had to hit the ground, but she just hit the ground with her front paws, so they're not going to be down that far right away. Over here is where they'll just kick down really fast, because she just hit the ground, and those ears are going to reply to that. And right here, air, the ears would be forward because they're like a pendulum. See right here, actually this should be down here because she's got to, she has to touch the ground first with her front legs, not her back legs. So here she's up, here she um, is still up in the air. So here I think I need to bring her torso down a little bit like that. I see what I was going for there, but right here the torso should be down a little further. Now let's look at the, the tuft of fur under her chin. And let's see, so right there I had it not do very much. Right here, she's elevating, so right here, this tuft of fur should be like right down here. Really um, under the pressure of the force, the momentum. So here, it's still, actually it's reversing, so it's going to bounce back up. And then here, it's still being affected. Here, it kicks down instantly, because gravity just finally caught up. So right here, it's still going to be further back. And then here, it's still under gravity. So yeah, it's not going to pick up anytime soon. And then here, she's lifting up again. So yeah, it's mostly going to be under gravity. And one way I can check all of this make sure it looks okay and then I have to account for the tail. I'll save my progress as I should do every five minutes at least. Alright so that tail, let's look at that. Tail starts there. Now I could have the tail independent and just bouncing around as much as I want or I could have it affected by gravity so right here the tail would be fully up because it's, it's landing and then here it's still fully up because it just hit the ground and now here the tail would kick out like like that and then it would return to its normal spot so let's see how this looks so I'll do a quick um, frame by frame here. See this um, is not a good example because the frame rate is so sporadic. So what I'll do is copy the first set to 24 and then go from there. So let's see how this looks. So here she is pushes up with her forward weight, touches down with both all four legs, and her ears look right, kicks up. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. 
sometimes only after you see the animation do you really know for sure. But I'll test it out now and after, um, let's see, uh, so I have her, her run. Uh, there's one thing I do want to do and that's have her stand up. And this is something uh, this particular uh, rabbit is known for. She'll stand vertically in the air with her um, back legs supporting her whole uh, upper weight. Alright, so I have <coughs> the uh, position here. And next thing I'll do is get the tail ready and then keyframe the height because that's critical. And next thing I'll do is here she'll be lifting up. So to lift up, I have to I think I think I'll just rotate this. Now that that's been rotated, I'll rotate these legs down so she's pivoting. And I'll move this up here. <clears throat> the ears are going to flop down from gravity. Her um, front legs will kick out like that. <clears throat> this tuft will reach the bottom and then her her head will go kind of like that. This is really a lot of weight right there for this rabbit. So maybe this is not the best um, position for the character but this is the way it's built so there's only so much I can do here I really wanted more of a streamlined look to this it's more more um, pudgy right here for that back it's it should be down here not so far up. So what I think that's a issue of could be the um, the weighting of it. I could add more weight to it. Let me see what happens now that I have that set up there. So let's say I want to add more weight to the back. Let me see if that's possible. Alright, so mainline, I'm on frame zero to allow this to be adjusted. Now I just have to um, reset that um, setting here. Alright, so here it is. This is what I want. Maybe uh, give more weight to all of this, but for some reason it's making it look bigger. Let's see what happens there. <clears throat> so I'll go to stand vertical. Oh, see, that's even worse. It looks like it's even worse. Alright, so edit, undo. Oh, okay, it's not. Oh, yeah, it did it. So to reset it, I have to click click outside the, the character. Alright, so this didn't really work out too well. Yeah, 
there's not much I can do here. I want to adjust her center here so it's not so wide. But maybe it's just a matter of affecting this stuff here. So here she is, she's reaching up. That's not really what I'm going for here. So the only thing I could think of is to pull this up here so her head is further up. But then look at that back. That's way too much. It should cut down here and, and then maybe taper here. It's like way too much over here. I'm not sure how to adjust that other than scale that I could think of. The only thing I can think of is if the bones were in a different position, but because like here she looks, she looks fine. That's the the amount of volume I want for that. But when she's standing up, all right, I have to undo that. I mean that helped a little bit. So what I'll do is go under here, keyframe this, go up here, <coughs> go up here, and keyframe this forward, maybe um, maybe like that. And then for the back, let me do something here. I'll keyframe that. Let me move this forward. Let me see what happens. I'll uh, see it didn't really do too much there. What does this do? Scale bone, maybe that's it. Let me um, edit undo and let me scale this bone. Let me see what happens. So I'll keyframe frame one because I want it to, to vary and now I'll uh, see. Wow that's weird. It actually scales the bone itself. Ha, <laughs> that's funny. I never actually used that tool before, but now I see <clears throat> why it's used. I wanted the vertical to compress in. So I have to look at this and determine is that what I'm going for. And not quite, but based on the way the character is built, I mean, this is what's happening here, so let me um, just do something like that, rotate this down here, um, move that down there, ears will be down there. Huh, that's weird. Look how much that ear affected that. That means the ear is, ear is too strong with the weighting of the ear. So maybe that'll affect a little bit, but that looked a little bit better. So when I go on the main skeleton, if I click on the ear, let me... Um, now actually the ear looks pretty good. Yeah, the weighting looks about right. I don't want to mess with that too much. The reason it's affecting this is because these keyframes are not as heavily weighted over here. Like with this, look how little impact that has. I could go like this, and then you can see what's happening there. The more weight it has, the more it affects everything else. So let's just see what happens there. I don't think it's going to work out. Yeah, that didn't really improve anything. So we'll go back and just get that back to normal. Maybe like that. Alright, 
so continuing the stand, that's not too bad. I mean, she's just uh, a little different in her um, stance a little bit. See, that's a little better right there. And then maybe I can move this forward like that. And this way her legs are on top of her nose. <laughs> Alright, I have to um, pull this up even further. Like that. Maybe push it forward a little. Yeah, that's a little better. It's really stretching the um, canvas of the character but I mean that's what I'm going for here all right so I messed that part up there actually that, that'll be a good extension so let me copy these and put them right there get this over here out of the way I mean, this is very similar to what happens when a rabbit stands up like this. Alright, and I'll just vary this a little bit. See, the arm sh <clears throat> should be down here already. Ears should be right about there. Where's that other ear? So I'll move that tail maybe up a little bit, put some more pressure on the, the legs, maybe rotate her up a little bit more. And now I could have her drop back down really quick. So I'll just go copy, piece to there, and then by here she'll be back on the ground. This keyframe I don't need, that was the scale. So there's the lift, there's the stand, and then here she lands. And I could extend the stand longer in the actual animation. But this is like really important for the rabbit because um, she'll have height to uh, see any potential um, danger. Alright, her head kicks back here too much. So I'm going to copy, paste that there, and then I'll just rotate um, this like that. And then move that down like that. So let's look at secondary animation, and that would be the ear. Still further back here, it would move back a little like that, and then here it would it would catch up here to maybe there, and then here it would move forward a fraction. Then here, and be back here, and then here, maybe move a little there, and already be settling in at that point. And with that impact, 
impact there, I'll compress her down a little bit and push her legs up a little. So her forward momentum, her ear would be further back like that since it's catching up from gravity. And then once it impacts right there, these would be down immediately. Alright, so like that. There we go. And then they'll move forward a little bit. Now the tuft could still be down here and then by here it would maybe kick forward a little. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. Based on what I have to work with on the way I set it up, I mean, it works. It's a, you can see she's clearly standing up. Oh, see, the ear's messed up there. Look how the ear should push backwards. See, it should be still back. Instead, it's coming forward too fast. So let me get that ear and keep it back here a little bit. So here's the backward momentum. The ear should still be a little bit back. Oh, see. Maybe a little bit like that. And it should not be forward at this point since she's moving forward. there, like that, that's fine. And I'll put this all together in the um, final animation and test it all out. See how it all works together. Alright, so this can go back to frame one over here as she recoils and bounces like that. And that'll secure the keyframe height as well. Alright, so that'll do it for now with those um, main animations. Alright, now I'll have her ears forward. And this is one of her um, personality traits. She'll have her um, resting pose as usual. Um, and then she does this thing with her ears where her ears um, move forward. So I'll start there, and then I'll just have the ears go forward right away. So maybe they'll be a little further back at first. have her coil up a little bit. Maybe like that. And then the 
Keith's ears off. Kick forward a little bit. <laughs> Alright, sort of like that. So something like that, and then just reposition it like that. You just move it down at 24. The main idea is just to have our ears four. So there, they should go back just a little bit more. So let's see what that looks like. See your back legs barely move. I think they need to move a little bit. Otherwise your eye goes right to the back legs not moving at all and it looks a little weird so maybe just move them a little bit see if her legs are moving there the rest of her will move as well she wouldn't just be stagnant, so that makes more sense for her to be moving as a whole. Alright, so that's that. And then um, I'll put some uh, different animations in there. Like a, a leap, a vertical leap. Um, she's got her walk, which will essentially be her run. Because if you look at the walk, it's going to be moving pretty quick. It goes in one second to a full hop, and she fully extends there. I could go more dramatic with it, but I think that's pretty good. I could speed that up if I have to. I could do when she's going forward here I'll lift her up a little bit and then push these back as though they're kicking out maybe lift her up a little bit more there so she's going like that and then those kick forward just like that that makes more sense there we go and then that kicks down like that So that's getting there. And then with things like the tongue, I could just move that independently with this tool here. And I'm not going to mess with it now, but the tongue would jolt forward and that would be that. And then the nose, I could just use rotation for the nose. Um, one thing I do want to do is have her nose constantly moving so I could just go to mainline and just have this it's always moving the nose it's like non-stop so I'll go to rotate and I'll just keyframe frame one and then keyframe 
let's say frame 12 and then 6 frame 6 I'll, I'll move it out a little bit so it's like that now that's too much I have to go the other way like this maybe like maybe just a little bit like that so you get some sense of motion there So then I have to do a loop cycle to absolute frame one, like that. So you can see it's constantly moving. It's pretty subtle, but I think that'll be okay. And then that'll be good for now. All right, so I wanted to do like a, a leap into the air. I wish you could just like duplicate these, but they won't let you do that. Like I wanted to um, make a duplicate. Actually, what is this? Insert copy. Huh, I should see what that is. Oh, because I'm on the main frame. You have to be in here. See, it's either rename or delete. You can't do anything else with it. Like, I wanted to insert a copy of, or duplicate it. If I could duplicate this, I could save a lot of time with her vertical stand. That's the one I'm trying to replicate. Because when she goes like this, she'll leap up into the air and then land. but I'll have to do that manually again. Create a new um, stand here. Ju I'll just do jump. Jump up. So here I am on frame one and I'll make this as quick as I can. I, I click on the outer edge of the limbs because that will keyframe pretty much the whole limb and it's really useful. Alright, so I have this as our starting stance and all this I'll keyframe and then I'll keyframe her height which is her center pivot right there. Alright, so next thing I'll do, I'll get her standing up Actually, she has to coil down. She has to coil in. Like she's like building all this energy to, to leap up. So I'll coil the rabbit inward like this. And <clears throat> this is um, like a, a good project to work on for this um, animation at this time, today is um, April 1st, 2021, and it is um, the week of uh, Easter, when the Easter rabbit is really uh, a really uh, popular character for um, the holiday. And I've always been a fan of the Easter, Easter rabbit, the Easter bunny. And um, that's why it's uh, like uh, just good timing with this project. This is like going to be a, a character in one of my films. really important character. Alright, so now there's this. I have to check those legs. They're a little too stagnant there. I want them to rotate a little bit more. Alright, so she's cooling up and now there's going to be a, a catch-up phase where the ears finally catch up and her 
her um, energy is about to explode into a jump. So the energy is all building up, ready to jump. And she's coiling, coiling inward like that. And then her ears catch up. A little too fast though. So a little slower is okay. And now this catches up. So now she's ready to just burst into a, um, a vertical leap. So right here, instantly up. Look at that, that's weird. So rather than mess with that, I'll just rotate her torso right here. So I have to keyframe this again, make sure I get the height keyframed. And then here, actually she's still reaching up. She hasn't left the ground yet. So these uh, legs will be right about here. And actually I'll just have them right here. Like that, the tail will be kicked down. Uh, I'll have her head up there. These paws will be fully down. The ears will be fully down. This tuft will be fully down. So you can see. It's coiled up. Energy. Oh, what happened there? I didn't keyframe these. That's why it's doing that. So I have to decide. That is supposed to be similar to that. But I never... I should have keyframed them before I moved to that next step. Alright, so I have to go back and redo this. So you want to give the sense that she's building up all this energy, like coiling into a ball. And then finally it just releases all of a sudden where she jumps up into the air. Alright, so here I have to look. Her leg is there. Now I'll go here and it pushes down too far so I have to pull her up just a little bit right there so it's aligned like that and now here she'll be in the air so I'm going to lift her up here because she's really leaping up and I have to zoom out so here she is leaps up and this is going to force her legs to really kick out. Like, hey, I'm fully extended here. Like that. Her tail as well. Her ears I'll get to in just a second. I can do. Alright, so the ears would not be like that. The ears would be forced down. That back ear, I don't even really have to worry about because you can't even see it. So there it is the burst of energy into the air. Here, she's going to catch up into the air so she reaches up to her peak height right here this is barely gonna move she's barely affected here she's starting to return to the ground within the same motion so you don't want to have it be too dramatically different 
All right, so that will be like that. And the ear will kick back a little, maybe. The tail should be right about there. Here she's going to start coming back down to earth. So I'll just copy this one, bring it over here. Now her paws are going to get ready to reach the ground. So she has to get ready for that. Now here, her front paws as well. Her, her tuft is starting to catch up. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's good. And now I'll have her hit the ground right now. So that will be this phase right here. I have to copy this. And that's what's so easy about about the jump. It's pretty pretty easy. All right. So that ear is not going to be down yet. It's still in the air. So it's like that, and the other ear as well. I'll see. That's okay. And then um, have her forward like that. And then this tuft will be fully up in her face. Her arms are getting ready to, to reach the ground. Her tail will be fully up. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And now she's going to hit the ground pretty quick. So let's see, what's a good one to hit the ground on? And maybe coil out. Yeah, that'd be good. So she'll hit the ground here pretty quick. And now she's going to coil back to frame one. So I'll just copy that, paste it there, and I'll just check the ears. Ears fall. See, the ears fell too quick there. Did they? Um, did they? Falling, falling. It's, so she hits the ground here. That means the ears would fall forward like that. However, the ears would really kick forward here like that and then move forward like that and then the ears catch up here so they'll be back to normal there as she unravels All right, so that's good. All right, so I'll put this um, together. And let's see if she jumps up. Are those ears a little too much there? No, that's good. I want to give a little more personality to those ears. All right, and then the the legs, I'll move those a little bit more so it's a little less static. Huh, it looks like it barely moved there. That's better. Alright, so I have one, two, three, four, five um, keyframe animations that'll really save me a lot of time. Um, I think I have a lot of the ones that I want. This um, character is um, a defensive character, so she'll always be on the run. She'll never get into a fight or confront. Um, 
the enemies that will be in this film that I'm working on. At least, um, that's the idea. Since she's a, a prey animal, she'll always be defensive. Alright, so that's it for now. I'll just save this. And now I'll put this uh, quick animation together. Start with her stand. So here she is, uh, just hanging out. Now I'll get to frame 54. And I think I'll do her vertical stand. When I copy then paste that in, it copies frame 0, so I have to delete frame 0. Oh wow, that's so weird. I know why it did that though. I think it's because I didn't keyframe right here the rotation. No, actually that's not it. That's weird. This should be sitting down like that. That's why it looks so weird. And this should be kicking up like that. So I don't know what happened there like that and the tuft should be down like that that's fine now um, let's see I'll have her ears go forward in this one It's a, a little bit weird. And then uh, she'll jump up. Actually, I'll have her walk now. So there's keyframe key zero. I have to delete that. And she'll start to hop around. And the way I'll have her hop is to make sure I'm on that and then copy paste so I have to check that and that looks good paste that again and maybe one more time right there you can see all this animation that I saved all that time Um, that's what they call like an exposure sheet where the character goes through um, certain keyframes through the um, timeline uh, in traditional cell animation. I think that's the right um, situation for that. But in the Disney Animation Studio on the Amiga 2000, that had the exposure sheet and that was really helpful when you had to copy keyframes and just paste them into different spots um, so now that I have her finished walking I'll have her do her jump and now that she's here Let's see, I'll go back to frame one, which I think would be right here. Right here. And I'll just copy that, piece that right there. Now I'll throw her jump in there. And the way you do that is you just click on the item you want and then you go on this insert copy and just press it and it drops it right into your timeline so there's that now she's going to jump coils up and burst of energy up in the air because it takes tremendous force and then she lands and then back to the, the rest position so rather than copy all the way back to there, I'll just go to stand and then insert copy and 
have to delete that zero keyframe because it copies that in too. So that's it. And there's your animation. You could vary that as much as you want. 320 frames. And I'll render it out. But here's a really choppy look at what it would resemble. Alright, that's good. So I'll test it out, see how it looks, and then go from there. I'll render it out. Uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully you learned something about um, the challenge of animating an animal for those who are new to animation. Um, and then setting up the skeleton and the tricky part of uh, different angles of the, the character. Like when uh, this character was standing. Uh, but thanks for watching. Feel free to comment, subscribe, like, and share. And have a good day.